Centaur b is an Earth-like planet that circles around the closest star to the planet Earth. What a coincidence! The discovery of new planets that are even better for life than Earth has jolted the scientific community. You might already be aware of the existence of habitable exoplanets. These are planets in our galaxy that are Earth-like. While the conditions on Earth are pretty decent for life, why settle for decent when you can go for the best? Planets that offer more land, balanced temperatures, fewer deserts, and an abundance of water might exist somewhere out there. Paradise exists, but remember, we're talking about the future of humanity, and scientists have found some top contenders. Join us as we explore these fascinating planets and just how we might reach them. Superfriendly planets, superhabitable planets, Makako, a renowned physicist responsible for being the co-founder of string theory, has an optimistic outlook on the future of humanity. He believes that we can achieve immortality and even reach a point where we're colonizing other universes, at least two planet species, because we have to have a settlement there in case something bad happens to planet Earth. Meteorite impacts, supervolcanoes, ice ages, all are potential threats. Five billion years from now, the sun will eat up the Earth. But step one is to leave Earth and colonize other planets. We could find an Earth-like planet out in the galaxy and go settle there in the far future. But why settle for just Earth-like planets? Introducing Superhabitable Planets Superhabitable planets are certain celestial bodies that may offer an even greater potential for hosting life compared to our beloved Earth. In 2014, Rene Heller and John Armstrong proposed this concept. They said that merely identifying a planet within its star's habitable zone is not enough to ascertain its true habitability. The assumption that Earth, as the sole inhabited planet known to us, possesses the most suitable physical and chemical parameters for life is not entirely clear-cut. We know that life depends on the existence of liquid water, and that's why we look for Earth-like exoplanets. But some researchers say that other types of planets may offer equal, or even better conditions for life compared to those found on Earth. The quest for superhabitable worlds embraces the possibility that planets need not resemble Earth to harbor life, but could offer even more favorable chances for the emergence and evolution of diverse organisms. Contrary to the notion that Earth represents the pinnacle of planetary habitability, a superhabitable world, a terrestrial planet, or a moon could potentially support a richer array of flora and fauna compared to our own planet. Such a world would show a greater degree of environmental friendliness toward life. Furthermore, not all rocky planets situated within a habitable zone can be automatically deemed habitable. Tidal heating, for instance, may render terrestrial or icy worlds habitable beyond the boundaries of the stellar habitable zone, as is observed in the internal ocean of Jupiter's moon, Europa. Some scientists say that our fixation on Earth-like worlds may hinder our exploration of exobiology and the diverse possibilities it holds. Identifying superhabitable worlds requires a shift in perspective, where we focus more on biological reasons rather than geocentric or anthropocentric reasons. Anthropocentric refers to a perspective that places human beings as the central and most significant entity in the universe, while geocentric means you're evaluating everything while using the Earth as a center of reference. Astrobiologists believe that our focus on finding a second Earth may be causing us to tunnel vision and neglect other possibilities, like planets that are even better than Earth. The concept of superhabitable planets can sometimes be challenging to convey as it requires us to question the assumption that Earth is the pinnacle of habitability. While our planet boasts an impressive array of complex and diverse life forms, as well as the ability to thrive in extreme environments, this does not necessarily mean that Earth represents the epitome of habitability in all aspects. To broaden our search, Heller and Armstrong proposed the establishment of an exoplanet profile encompassing various factors such as stellar type, planetary mass, and location within the planetary system. The search for life now goes beyond yellow dwarf stars like our sun scientists also look at planetary systems associated with orange dwarf stars. These stars, cooler, dimmer, and less massive than our sun, offer an alternative perspective for hosting planets with abundant life. C. Our sun is actually not the best kind of star for hosting a planet with lots of life on it. This perspective challenges the assumption that Earth's solar system represents the ideal template for the existence of life elsewhere in the universe. In the vast expanse of the Milky Way, 
red dwarf stars outnumber yellow dwarfs by approximately 50%. Unlike our sun, which has an estimated lifetime of less than 10 billion years, orange dwarf stars boast much longer lifetimes, ranging from 20 billion to 70 billion years. This extended lifespan of orange dwarfs offers planets within their habitable zones more time to foster the development of life and accumulate biodiversity, considering that complex life on Earth took around 3.5 billion years to emerge. However, while older planets possess advantages, they must not be too ancient. Over time, these planets exhaust their internal geothermal heat and lose their protective geomagnetic fields. Therefore, researchers propose an optimal age range referred to as the sweet spot, which lies between 5 billion and 8 billion years. In comparison, our own Earth is currently around 4.5 billion years old. Mass and size are also very important. A planet's ability to host life is closely related to its size and mass. A planet larger than Earth would have a larger livable surface area, potentially nurturing a more extensive and stable atmosphere. Optimal circumstances for life may exist on a planet that is 10% larger than Earth. Furthermore, if a planet has 50% more mass than Earth, then it will produce a continuous source of heat thanks to the extended duration of radioactive decay within its interior. This, in turn, would keep the planet's molten core and crucial magnetic field intact for an extended length of time, expanding the window of opportunity for the birth and evolution of life. More mass also results in increased gravitational effects. This gravity will help the planet retain its atmosphere for longer, and the longer the atmosphere lasts, the better it is for life. But, of course, the more the gravity, the harder it would be for humans to move around if we ever were to visit such a planet. But maybe that's a minor issue when compared to the hurdle of getting to such a planet in the first place. Temperature is important too. Worlds that exhibit a slight temperature increase of approximately 8 degrees Fahrenheit compared to Earth could potentially be superhabitable. The reason behind this lies in the possibility of larger tropical zones, which, as observed on Earth, foster greater biodiversity. Tropical rainforests, characterized by their warm and moist climates, host a remarkable diversity of life compared to other regions. However, it is important to consider that warmer planets may demand even more moisture due to the expansion of deserts caused by increased heat. After all, water is a fundamental requirement for all life on our planet, and it plays a pivotal role in the search for habitable worlds. Additionally, planets having landmasses similar to Earth's in size, but text cuts off here. Divided into smaller continents, planets may offer a more hospitable environment for life. When continents were very big in the past, such as the supercontinent Gondwana 500 million years ago, their innards were far from oceans and turned into enormous hostile deserts. In our own world, we see that the shallower parts of our seas support a wider diversity of life than the deepest parts. As a result, Scientists have begun to hypothesize that planets with shallower water masses would be better suited to hosting a variety of life forms. While some of these conditions remain beyond our current observational capabilities when it comes to exoplanets, researchers continue to search for these indicators. In this pursuit, Alpha Centauri B emerged as a particularly promising target for the discovery of a superhabitable world, as suggested by the original researchers who introduced this concept. After all, Alpha Centauri b is part of the stellar system that is the closest to our planet, Alpha Centauri. While the potential of this system is quite exciting, we haven't confirmed any planets in Alpha Centauri b yet, much less superhabitable planets. One was reported in 2012 but was disproven in 2015. Another was thought to exist according to observations in 2013, but it's still unconfirmed. So, there are no known worlds in Alpha Centauri b, but what about its neighbors, like Proxima Centauri? Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf, after all. Not only could it have habitable planets, but superhabitable planets as well. The added bonus is that it's only 4.2 light years away from Earth. So, what kind of planets does it have? One planet is Proxima Centauri b, an exoplanet residing within the habitable zone of the red dwarf. Alongside its disputed counterparts, Proxima c and Proxima d, it stands as one of the nearest known exoplanets to our solar system. So, is this planet habitable? Well, not as much as one might think. Significant obstacles prevent life from thriving on Proxima Centauri b 
due to a number of variables. The star's activity and the tidal locking phenomenon make it difficult to live on this planet. The UV radiation emitted by Proxima Centauri is comparatively redder, resulting in potentially reduced interaction with organic compounds. Additionally, this UV radiation may generate lesser amounts of ozone. The star's activity could even disrupt the ozone layer, leading to heightened levels of UV radiation that could prove detrimental. Depending on the eccentricity of its orbit, Proxima Centauri b may temporarily lie outside the habitable zone during certain portions of its journey. Furthermore, its atmosphere could be so thin that water would instantly evaporate or solidify as ice. If that is the case, Proxima Centauri b could be even worse for life than Earth. Perhaps planets don't even need to have liquid water to sustain life. A planet just has to contain molecules that can act as a solvent. Water is the solvent for molecules on Earth. However, molecules with different chemical bonds could need other liquids as solvents. Some scientists theorize that methane and ethane may work as a solvent for life. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, has liquid methane and ethane on its surface. It is rich in organic molecules containing carbon and is often thought to be the most likely spot for a different kind of life form to arise. Titan is very cold, with an average surface temperature of minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. It will be pretty challenging for any life form to evolve there. However, there is a heated debate in the scientific community regarding the theoretical possibility of life on Titan. It is highly unlikely. Even if life were to exist on Titan, it would be completely different from anything we've ever seen before. That's not to say that we can't expect to find Earth-like life in the universe. Actually, scientists believe that we are going to find many planets similar to Earth in the Milky Way. There are an estimated 40 billion Earth-sized planets orbiting within the habitable zones of sun-like stars and red dwarf stars within the Milky Way galaxy alone. And these are just the planets in the habitable zones. There are many exoplanets that we can actually confirm the existence of. The first detection of exoplanets occurred in 1992 when radio astronomers Alex Woolzen and Dale Frail identified the pulsar planets PSR B1257 plus 12b and PSR B1257 plus 12c, marking the first confirmed detection of exoplanets. In 1995, Michel Mayer and Didier Culo of the University of Geneva made a groundbreaking discovery. They found the first exoplanet orbiting a main sequence star, 51 Pegasi b. This discovery shattered previous notions about the formation of planetary systems. Since the initial discovery of exoplanets, scientists have detected 4,514 of them and counting. So, how do scientists detect exoplanets? Direct imaging has been one of the methods used to identify planets outside our solar system. This involves taking pictures of the planets. This is, of course, difficult to do because the planets are so far away. Direct imaging has been crucial for identifying exoplanets and has already confirmed 51 planets so far. But there are other methods for identifying planets. The Doppler method has helped confirm 901 planets, but the most successful method has been the transit method, with 3,375 planets confirmed so far. This method detects exoplanets by observing changes in the brightness of a star caused by a planet passing in front of it during its orbit. There are other methods used to find exoplanets too. In 2022, NASA announced the discovery of an additional 5,000 exoplanets. Despite the distance to these planets being far from our reach, even with the fastest spacecraft in existence, NASA remains optimistic about the possibility of reaching these worlds in the not-too-distant future. The agency envisions the development of advanced spacecraft that could potentially achieve speeds approaching that of light. The goal of reaching other worlds by traveling at the speed of light is already in motion. For instance, the famous physicist Stephen Hawking backed a project called Breakthrough Starshot. Its mission was to use superlight sail-powered spacecraft to reach Alpha Centauri within years. The ultimate aim was to explore Proxima Centauri b for signs of life. The goal of Breakthrough Starshot was to create a fleet of tiny superlight nanocrafts to travel at 15% to 20% the speed of light. The spacecraft, powered by light sails driven by lasers, would journey to Alpha Centauri, located 4.37 light years away from Earth. They would arrive there in approximately 20 to 30 years. Once there, they would capture images and gather data from Proxima Centauri b. 
but the project faces significant hurdles. The laser technology required to reach 20% of the speed of light does not exist yet. Interstellar dust could damage the tiny spacecraft. We also need to understand more about the planets around Alpha Centauri. The future could see the development of ion engines, which are a type of electric propulsion system that has already been used by NASA to reach the Dwarf Planet series. These engines could enable us to travel even faster and more efficiently, potentially making interstellar travel a reality. The principle of ion engines lies in expelling positively charged ions using electricity, which in turn propels the spacecraft in the opposite direction. This process offers a more fuel-efficient and longer-lasting propulsion system compared to traditional chemical rockets. However, the speeds achieved by current ion engines are far from reaching the velocity required for interstellar travel. To overcome this challenge, future advancements in ion engine technology could involve the utilization of more efficient propellants, improved ionization techniques, and increased power sources to accelerate the ions even further, potentially achieving much higher speeds necessary for reaching distant star systems. Furthermore, harnessing nuclear fusion for propulsion has been proposed as a potential breakthrough. By replicating the energy-producing process occurring within stars, nuclear fusion engines could provide an enormous amount of thrust, allowing spacecraft to achieve significant speeds and reach distant exoplanets within a human lifetime. While these advancements in propulsion technology remain in the realm of theoretical possibilities, they represent promising avenues for future exploration. But how exactly do we choose which planets we want to colonize? It wouldn't make sense to pick planets at random. Scientists already know what they will be looking for when searching for habitable planets. They will look for planets with an atmosphere similar to Earth's, ideally with oxygen, nitrogen, and trace amounts of other gases indicating the presence of life-sustaining processes. Water is essential for life, so they will seek planets with significant amounts of liquid water, whether in oceans, lakes, or underground reservoirs. Moderate temperatures are also crucial to ensuring a stable and habitable environment for life forms similar to those on Earth. Scientists will look for planets within a star's habitable zone where temperatures are suitable for liquid water to exist. The planet's gravity and mass should be comparable to Earth's, allowing for a stable atmosphere and conditions suitable for human habitation. A planet with a stable axis tilt and minimal extreme weather patterns is preferable to ensure a stable climate and to avoid extreme conditions that could hinder human settlement. A magnetic field similar to Earth's can protect against harmful cosmic radiation and solar winds, making the planet more suitable for life. A planet with diverse ecosystems and various landscapes could offer greater biodiversity and potential resources for human colonization. For any future human colonization mission, the availability of resources like minerals, metals, and elements required for sustaining life and building infrastructure will be essential. They might look for evidence of microbial life or biosignatures, such as certain gases in the atmosphere that indicate biological processes. The distance from Earth is also a factor. Proxima Centauri b, located in the habitable zone of the star closest to our Sun, Proxima Centauri, is about 4.24 light-years away from Earth. This proximity makes it an intriguing candidate for potential exploration and colonization. Future space missions may focus on these factors when selecting planets for colonization, aiming to identify the most Earth-like exoplanets or those that offer unique and promising conditions for sustaining life. All in all, the search for superhabitable worlds represents a fascinating and thought-provoking frontier in the field of astrobiology and planetary science. By challenging our preconceptions and broadening the criteria for what constitutes a habitable world, scientists aim to uncover planets that might offer an even more hospitable environment for life than Earth itself. While the discovery of a truly superhabitable world remains elusive, ongoing advancements in observational technology and the increasing wealth of exoplanet data continue to fuel our quest to answer one of humanity's most profound questions. Are we alone in the universe? Or is there another planet out there that is not only habitable but superhabitable?